Morning. Um, today we're with Jeff Lyons and uh, we'll be asking him a couple of questions about the technology needs of the future. So, Jeff, to start off, if you wouldn't mind, could you give us a bit of a, a bit of a flavour of your background in the, in mm. the sector, please? Yes, well, a lot of it's been research related and uh, certainly uh, that continues through to today. But uh, yes, research, one often thinks of universities and good, indeed good, good. that's where I uh, started. So, uh, University College London, um, where I and others were dealing with things which floated and uh, were also subsea. Um, prior to that, I'd actually been with uh, a company which has now changed its name, of course, but in the good old days, Brown and Root, and uh, developing uh, you know, fields which were predominantly jackets, uh, structures, although a wide range of other things um, going on at the time, some of which you don't see these days, you know, like the, uh, the concrete structures uh, which used to come out of uh, Norway um, at that time. Um, but floating was um, uh, the order of the day as far as our research was uh, con concerned and that's come somewhat to the fore in more recent times but obviously coupled with what we have on the seabed and uh, um, that was uh, at that time um, limited to rather large types of structures um, such as BP disks and, and the like uh, and um, well on Cormont the um, the, the, the big manifold centre which, which was there and, and like the much smaller um, satellite uh, units which we have um, scattered around the seabed. Um, and these days I devote all my time uh, to uh, BPP um, and looking at a wide range of uh, different areas, some of which one might consider as being um, uh, relatively standard engineering, uh, whether it's floating or, or, or subsea. Um, but we've been developing quite a, a number of um, uh, things along the way. Uh, including things like um, uh, very um, bendable hose for uh, liquefied natural gas transfer, okay. cryogenic use. Um, we've uh, been providing uh, riser management systems for ultra deep water drilling, and the, these are um, substantially um, software tools which allow the uh, deep operators of uh, drill ships to position the drill ship um, so as to uh, improve the operability of the drilling operation and indeed make the most of the life of, of the risers. And bearing in mind we're getting down to about three kilometres water depth um, uh, and that sort of thing. Well, one, one of the things which we um, had a, a, a very uh, interesting experience with um, with risers, with, with flexible risers, and the very sheared currents which we have in the west of Shetlands. And uh, we gathered an awful lot of data there and improved our understanding of problems associated with vortex induced vibration and the like. Um, and that led on to us you know, needing to uh, come up with improved methods of monitoring of what's actually happening down below, both for flexibles and for other things too. So in the near term, I guess that we're you know, uh, continuing to improve those sorts of technologies, whether it's uh, monitoring or um, making the most of the data, which in fact is actually coming out. Okay, that, that gives us a bit of your background. Um, <clears throat> Perhaps we could move on and talk now, looking forward, what you 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 particularly see um, as being the technologies that might be needed in the short and and long term, and just to put some category around it, if we if we can maybe consider for, as a first off the um, sort of life of field applications, so supporting existing infrastructures. What's your view on the technologies required for the future? Well, monitoring, as I just sure, mentioned, is, sure, is, is sure. Um, very important, uh, not just for uh, the near term, but also for the longer term too. But the you know, technologies you know, are improving all the time. It's this question of, in fact, being able to transmit the data as much as um, being able to have you know, sensors which are, in fact, suitable for that particular duty. But so they're developing all the time, whether it's associated with fibre optics, um, etc. I, I mentioned uh, our experience with Fornaven previously, and we were looking at flexible risers there. there. There are issues as the cables become larger, and we've now got uh, designs for um, very high power cables, good for 100 megawatts, uh, which is potentially game changing um, because you can have those cables running through the air uh, water interface. Um, we understand what the fatigue issues are, um, but uh, good for you know running suites of compressors, etc. Uh, down below, but plainly you want to be able to Excellent. monitor that sort of thing, what, what's actually going on. So there are fibre optic um, methods which um, are 
um, almost commonplace these days. We've um, provided systems in the past for developments which enable us to monitor over hundreds of kilometres away from the base station. Well, wow. just slow. On from that, then. So, if I could ask you the same question about technologies that you think might be relevant in the new field development, mm -hmm. and uh, and certainly the retrofit to existing infrastructure is one story with mm -hmm. monitoring and new field development. It's slightly easier in that you've got the chance to fit it at, at, at before it's in the water. Well, absolutely. So, and uh, again, harping on to you know cables and rises and that sort of thing. Um, it's relatively easy to actually incorporate the conduits um, for um, data fiber transmission, optics, the fiber optics for sure, yeah, yeah. into whatever you're going to lay there. Um, and it's you know, not that expensive to do it, so you might as well you know, proceed with it. Fiber optics obviously uh, don't have um, a particular weight penalty, I know that's another thing. But you do have to treat them carefully. Um, I think back to uh, a development which we had with others, uh, which was for monitoring the strains within polyester mooring lines right. for deep and ultra deep um, floaters and of course polyester stretches rather well and um, glass doesn't and glass doesn't no <laughs> so you know uh, one can come up with designs and we, we have done that uh, to ensure that you end up in appropriate gearing um, so that kind of thing works um, yeah and we would like to see that type of technology um, you know applied in, in, in many other areas of course um, you know, the instrumentation the prices you know, fall, and even if you consider them to be initially high as capex, then actually in the long term, you know what you're the saving over the years, it, it's nothing. So you, you should really, you know, be able to build it in. It's just that usual old pain, I think, which we, you know, have that complaint that, you know, the people with the opex budget are different to the people with the capex budget, and uh, but it's the capex people who have to actually get it right because otherwise the OPEX costs go up substantially because you're trying to retrofit something and that's, that's so difficult in comparison. What, 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 what potentially is the big game changer of tomorrow, in your view? In our view, well, it's, it's important to see that what you've got down there is, is behaving as, uh, as intended. Um, it's all very well um, having expectations uh, in design of something that uh, you know, will behave um, in the way expected, but things happen down there which are unexpected. Sometimes there's an amelioration, uh, you know, things aren't quite as bad as you might have otherwise thought they would be. But sometimes things are worse. So it is important to be able to go down there and inspect. Plain advent of autonomous vehicles, the opportunity for those to be um, pretty much continually inspecting uh, what's actually out there and, and with um, uh, contact less sensors uh, to be able to improve the situation there. Again, harping back to flexible risers and the like, um, we and others are um, improving technologies and they're being proven at the moment for relatively high speed inspection of flexible risers along the whole length, or in fact uh, and using things like eddy current, uh, and uh, otherwise uh, coming up with uh, detail, detailed fine definition inspection by using things like radiography. So the, so the game changing aspect of that for the future is the ability to have a feedback loop on what the performance is to, to have a better comprehension of future design. Indeed so, indeed so, yes. We've always been um, very keen to, to close that loop yeah. and, um, and of course that can then feed into standards and, and things of that nature. Jeff, thank you very much. Good My to pleasure. speak to you.